here it was the sq1 as we call it sprint qualifying one so we had a sprint qualifying one sprint qualifying two and a sprint qualifying three this is the analysis of what went down during the sprint qualifying this is how the qualifying is you go out on a brand new tire and tire you're going out on you have a chance of going back to the garage but if you go back to the garage you cannot change tires that tire is what you use in qualifying all through unlike the normal qualifying you can go back change tires and come back and do whatever you like and that tire you are starting with you are, are starting sq1 on m medium tires sq2 on medium tires and sq3 on soft tires the sq1 on medium tires has to be brand new set the sq2 medium tires has to be brand new set and the sq3 have to be brand new soft tires my name is Oshia Solua Daminari. i'm a mechanic welcome to exxon f1 also known as formula one column africa now to the sq1 it was so interesting that on the first lap pierre gasly was wheel back in remember P pierre gasly had issues in free practice yesterday and also in qualifying yesterday now he had to be wheeled back because of um, leak from his exhaust the engine transmission and some electronics was changed yesterday so he's having leakages from the exhaust and also some hydraulic leaks which might cause the, the car to go into flames again so sprint qualifying was terminated there so he'll be starting last on the grid today for the drivers that were out in sq1 the, those drivers were nick de Vries, Sunoda, Botas and uh, Zhou Guan Yu. and the reason why some of them were out was because Lugan Sargent rammed his car into the walls while trying to evade color signs sprint right behind the grid and for Lugan Sargent himself that is starting behind the grid he will not be starting the sprint at all he was meant to start in 15 because he qualified into SQ2 but he won't be starting the sprint at all they could not finish coupling the, the rear end of the car because the shaft would have gone and the transmission would have been affected. The Ferraris were still showing improvements. They were on top. Ferrari, are, they have the pace, they have the car, they have everything. It's the setup and, and the upgrade that is really affecting them. And um, that was what happened same same time last year, and they were really taken advantage of by Red Bull. So we believe Ferrari is back. They should be able to challenge the Red Bulls for the championship and give Red Bull a run for their money. Remember, the Red Bull going out of his teens before the middle of the year. If Ferrari and Aston Martin can really charge up, they will meet up and they might be able to overtake the Ferrari. The Mercedes is already out of the game. We don't need to look at Mercedes. They will keep having their ups and downs this season. They might catch up this season, but I don't see them really doing anything spectacular in the championship this season. For the SQ2, Kevin Magnussen, Esteban Ocon, Nico Alkenberg and Piastri. Piastri got out of SQ2 by Nick because he really tried to push into SQ3. Now, all through that, we saw Ferrari really thriving, and one of the setups they were able to get to keep their to make their tires warm up fast and to get the right downforce for the car, which has really helped them this race. And I think that will keep helping them in, in the next race. I don't, um, they might not be able to challenge the Red Bull in the race because they still lack. Um, a long pace then to the sq3 one car will not be starting because it does not have a new set of soft tires and that car is landon norris starting the grid 10th position now the remaining eight eight cars starting really gave it and it was fire with charles leclerc loving that track i'll say fourth straight pull in azerbaijan for him he even crashed but his crash did not mean anything because the, the two red bulls were unable to meet up with the time he set at first and russell at qualifying lewis hamilton in this sprint qualifying for the first time russell qualifying in in fourth position lewis hamilton in sixth position perez out qualifying verstappen once again in baku this is said to be a great race when george russell moved to mercedes i've said it that it's going to be hot because um, he's going to give verstappen a run for his money because they've been antagonist for quite some time while they were both racing in formula 3 and formula 2 and also is going to keep Lewis Hamilton on his toes but majorly is going to give opponents a run for their money whenever he meets them fortunately for Red Bull now the Mercedes aren't competitive enough but I can tell you he's already getting festive and if it gets to the point that the Mercedes cars are well competitive oh my god I think we're going to all be 
in for good race because those guys are going to push themselves to the wall we are all going to be at the edge of our seat for like two three seasons maybe i'll have to move to netherlands move closer to max verstappen's fans because i believe max verstappen is going to run away hmm. 19 drivers started charles leclerc was on pole he got away cleanly charles leclerc got started pretty quick pretty well he was ahead it was all going well for him as he was leading and george russell got ahead pretty fast he was like 14 milliseconds faster than max verstappen and for all of us that knows max verstappen he has been a very slow starter but this guy got well quickly on turn one they pushed themselves but it was a clean and um, from turn two the old drama started max verstappen on the outside george russell on the inside nobody was ready to give in and remember this is not hamilton verstappen and i think verstappen should be matured enough now to understand that when you are leading a championship and you have a very good car like he has he needs to understand where to concede that was what hamilton did all through for him in 2021 till the half of the season and hamilton was like he's not giving in the game him giving in does not mean he would not overtake george russell but because of his anger his, his agility his shrewdness he just wanted to fight keep fighting he doesn't want to give in he expects every driver to give in to him like george russell said that he's here to fight he's here to win racing is all about fighting so he won't give in to him because he's max verstappen he won't and the role reversal max verstappen will do the same george russell crashed into him broke some part of the bodywork and the floor but that didn't mean it was difficult for him to pass George Russell. And from what happened, after the incident of Sunoda and Sunoda was out of the race, there was a restart. Immediately after the restart, he was able to get cleanly away from George Russell. George Russell said something, even if they remove their DRS rear wing, they are still faster than every other person. So you know you are faster. You are fighting against somebody that has nothing to lose. In 2017, the same thing happened between him and Ocon. He had a fight with Ocon. But here, he was challenging George Russell and was telling George Russell that they are keeping the fight again. I think Christian Ona has a lot to do in this. He has to talk to him. Ona is not going to do that because if you look at the race today, at the end of the race, they congratulated um, Checo, but Chris Ona did not even congratulate Checo. I'm not bringing up anything, but I'm just telling you the truth. But Max coming third, he acknowledged him. And Every driver has a right. It was a racing incident. But that to that, during the race, Charles Leclerc was overtaken by Perez that won the sprint race. But because of the damage on the on Max Verstappen's Red Bull, he could not overtake Charles Leclerc all through the race. Tomorrow is going to be a very first day for them. And funny enough, George Russell is not close to the front runners. It would have been crazy for them. Hamilton was smart enough. He could have committed almost the same thing happened and broken signs, rear wing or tires or, or damaged his own car. I not allowed Fernando Alonso to pass, but Fernando Alonso passed him easily. Sometimes you look at what you have and you look at where you are going to, to decide how you race. Racing is all about the mind, the car, the machinery, and the way you, you carry yourself along. Not just about winning, winning, winning. Sometimes you don't win to win. If he had backed out, he could have chased after Perez and won the, the sprint. But everybody today had the opportunity to learn from what happened. And I'm sure that going forward is a big lesson. And um, tomorrow, we are going to see a very beautiful race, a very fast series. And there will be a lot of elbows thrown, a lot of tantrums thrown until tomorrow. Baku is a great place. We might be there next year to cover it live for you because of you, our fans, because we love you. But until then, subscribe, like, comment. We love you, but don't bring bad energy. Tchau!